Welcome, faculty and staff of Fresno State. And thank you, Dr. Hall, and thank you, Belinda Munoz, for your introductions today. I personally was very touched by how it is that our speeches are going to interweave together who we are as Fresno State today. It's great to see all of you in 2023. I hope you all had a really restful uh, holiday break and a chance to make good memories with those you care about the most. First, I want to take a moment to acknowledge the historic flooding that has affected our entire state. If you have been impacted, please know that Fresno State is here to support you. And please reach out to our leadership so we can connect you to the resources we have available. Challenges like these remind us about the critical importance of community. Considering how we have accomplished so much together, it's comforting to affirm that the success we see at Fresno State depends on our deep commitment to collaboration, to the investments we make in one another, to our cooperative efforts to further the lives of our talented students, and to the exciting ecosystem of our greater Central Valley community, which is our home. That's the theme that I'd like to develop with you today, how our human connections change the lives of those around us, many times with an immediate positive impact that will sustain someone throughout their entire life. And the theme of the power of connections could not come at a more timely moment. Currently, the CSU is experiencing historic enrollment challenges, and funding will now be based on how a CSU campus is able to maintain and grow its enrollment. Enrollment for us at Fresno State is not about abstract numbers. Our North Star has always been our direct and transformative impact we have on our students, their families, and our communities. However, now is the time to showcase how Fresno State's value is found in offering a world-class education, empowering a multicultural and diverse students, and creating an ecosystem of success that promotes a sense of community based on real connections, real growth. Indeed, the first connection our students make with Fresno State is usually a staff member. It's a staff member who does this connection. Whether it's Fong Yang and his team out in high schools and community colleges promoting Fresno State, or Kent Ternate and his team connecting with hundreds of our students at Dog Days, or Martina Granados' team, which includes Wendy Nelson's outreach, connecting with our Valley families, the first phase our Fresno State uh, uh, future students see is that of a staff member who engages, number one. Number two, answers questions. And number three, provides a concrete pathway for our students to see themselves as Fresno State students. And once they are at Fresno State, each friendly and helpful interaction builds a sense of belonging in our campus. Whether it's our professional staff in financial aid exploring resources or our academic advisors exploring majors and classes, being aware of the power of our words through which we connect with others and with each other allows us to create a culture of retention, belonging, and thriving at Fresno State for our students and also for ourselves here. Our connections with one another and with our students form the pulsating heartbeat of student satisfaction and retention and, of course, staff and faculty satisfaction and retention. And in regards to the classroom, during my years as a professor here, I saw firsthand how my faith, my personal faith in my students, which I conveyed directly and intentionally to them, created in them a sense of belonging and fostered in them a sense of security they needed to excel in the subject matter. I still remember a student who said to me, I graduated because you believed in me. So let's explore this theme of connections by considering the process of our strategic plan. This new strategic plan will connect resources to initiatives, money to real action. It translates to that and coordinate our efforts to accomplish concrete goals. Remember, concrete goals that will map, what? A path for Fresno State to be on the road for innovation. I wanna thank our steering committee 
for their thoughtful leadership and dedication to this work. Since August, they have organized town halls and sent surveys, resulting in feedback from over 1,000, I'm going to say that again, 1,100 students, faculty, staff, and community members. That's really unprecedented. This input assisted the committee in identifying key priorities and goals for our greater campus to consider throughout the strategic planning process. Additionally, a guiding statement subcommittee led by Dr. Thomas Holyoke with members from our campus community reviewed and updated the university's core values, mission, and vision statements. These draft statements, draft, remember that, that's the key word, have been crafted to reflect our collective values and convey what makes Fresno State attractive and distinct. Your input, that's why they're draft, remember, at this week's town halls will be instrumental as we refine our strategic planning goals, core values, mission, and vision statements. They're gonna be yours because you will have direct feedback on these. So I look forward to connecting with you in the town halls and really hearing your ideas. This spring, I will also form subcommittees with all of you here in the audience and staff and faculty with the goals of defining the measurable, again, measurable objectives for each of the categories. By fall 2023, collectively together, we will unveil our new five-year strategic plan that reflects us, who we are at Fresno State. Two new members of my cabinet will be essential to our strategic plan. I am thrilled to announce Dr. Rashanda Booker, our first ever university diversity officer. Dr. Applause at the beginning, that's great. <laughs> Dr. Burger, why don't you stand up so we can all see you? <laughs> there she is. Dr. Booker's extensive background in student affairs, admissions, fraternity and sorority life, career services, and recruitment provide her a solid framework from which to forge a culture that celebrates our diversity, where we highlight the tapestry of our region's people, their history, our past and current struggles, and contributions of so many that make this valley a place we all call home. Dr. Booker has a doctorate degree in educational leadership, research, and counseling from Louisiana State University. Again, please give Dr. Booker a round of applause. And Dr. Kent Willis, our new, another applause <laughs> at the beginning. <laughs> Dr. He's our new Vice President for Student Affairs and Enrollment Management. Dr. Willis holds a PhD in Educational Management from Hampton University, one of the nation's preeminent historically black colleges and universities. Dr. Willis is well published in college and career readiness, closing achievement gaps, school-based wellness, and education policy. Dr. Willis is focused on creating engaging and transformative educational experiences to inspire lifelong learning, authentic leadership, and independent scholarship. And here's a note about Dr. Willis, which showcases his commitment to us. He told us during his interview that he's had a subscription to the Fresno Bee since he first applied for the job eight months ago. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Again, let's, let's give him a round of applause. Thank you very much. <clears throat> of course, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Dr. Keller and Carolyn Kuhn, our former Vice President of Student Affairs and Enrollment Management, those of you who had the privilege of working closely with Dr. Kuhn can attest to her thoughtfulness, unwavering dedication to our students, wit, <laughs> we cannot forget the wit, and steady and resolved leadership. Dr. Uh, Kuhn, I'm sure, is, is uh, savoring her retirement. <laughs> so as we look to new beginnings, we lead with the insight gained from past challenges. 
which reinforce the importance of coming together and connecting with one another. That is our theme for today. Often I'm reminded of the smaller, more personal moments that drive our culture of belonging and sense of community on campus. Did you know that students show, that, that studies show, that the stronger the student's sense of belonging at the university, the better the chance they will stay in school and ultimately earn a degree? Indeed, being able to articulate the following, I belong to Fresno State, and Fresno State belongs to me, provides our students the fortitude needed to finish their degree. In order to enhance direct lines of communication within our campus, I am officially opening a connection booth on campus this semester. That's right, my own booth. <laughs> Your own booth. I plan to be at the booth twice a month so that students, faculty, and staff can easily stop by and speak to me. If there's an issue that's bigger than, hello, how are you, great to see you, I will give you a card and then we will connect later. Members of our leadership team will also have sessions in the booth. What's a dean? What's a provost? What's an AVP for enrollment management? What, is, you know, what are all of these titles? What do they mean? You can find out once these leaders are in the booth. What is this? It's with the aim of forging a stronger sense of who we are as a community here. And I'm so very proud to announce that the booth was built by our very own students in construction management. So huge thanks to three students, Carlos Antonio, Jacqueline Molina, Berber, and Arthur Hauser for their fine work. And thank you, Associate Dean uh, Brad Hyatt for coordinating and also Dean Nuna for orchestrating all of this. <laughs> this past semester, I have had the uh, privilege of sharing lunch and dinner with different student groups in order to hear firsthand about their experiences at Fresno State. There's something about food that opens people up. I wanna hear what's going on. These meetings have been enlightening and heartwarming because it's been 23 years since I was a student. So a lot has changed in 23 years. They were revealing, they were heartwarming, they were remarkable in that I was able to see the challenging aspects of our students' current experiences. I'm hopeful that our conversations have lit a small light that is able to pierce through the darkest moments and that those students will in turn tell other students that there are people listening to them that there's a professor, that there's a president who is able and willing to listen to what they have to say. With our incredible students in mind, I want to share a brief story with you. During this past holiday season, I met a student group. Everyone was happy, they were boisterous. It was the holiday season after all. However, I noticed one of the students sitting quietly in the back, reserved. I found him after the event was over and asked him, if he was doing okay. Are you doing okay? Is everything fine with you? We began walking back to my office across campus and he shared with me that his father had recently passed away. At that moment, I shared with him the recent loss of my own father and gave him my condolences. A very simple human connection. I went back to my office. I contacted Georgiana Negron Long and soon after, the student had the information to access the care and support he needed at the Student Health and Counseling Center. He wrote to me a few weeks later to update me and thank me for the time I took to talk with him and for the resources I gave him. This small moment, this sharing of our grief and simple show of support for each other had a profound impact on me. And it's the genesis of the speech that I'm giving to you today. I recognize that we spend time focusing on recruitment and retention of our Valley students. We do do that. But it is the small personal connections, moments between people taking an interest in each other's well-being that can make some of the greatest impacts out there in the community and here within our own community of people, of staff and faculty as well. I have chosen connections as a theme to develop with you today because we must all be even more innovative, more intentional, and more focused as we work collaboratively to ensure that current Fresno State students have the support they need 
to accomplish their educational goals and that our up and coming future Bulldogs feel excited and glad to have chosen Fresno State. And I'm gonna add something else here, totally unscripted, to quote Belinda. It is our new year, our second chance at life for ourselves as well. All of us together create the sense of belonging that leads to academic excellence. Likewise, faculty and staff thrive when they can also say, when you can also say, sitting right here in this room, I belong to Fresno State, and Fresno State belongs to me. Fresno State exists because we are graduating students at the top of their fields and empowering them to become the best version of themselves on the one hand, but on the other hand, it's also our home. It's our academic home where we become the experts in our field as faculty, where we become the best that we can become as staff members as well. Let me note several specific items of achievement and impact that you have made possible. One of our newest deans, Dr. Elizabeth Loham, leads our College of Social Sciences and has already made a holistic and impactful impression on our students and campus. And Dr. Loham masterfully leads her social scientists to instill in our students a responsibility to further a more just and equitable society. That's what a social scientist does. My focus on Dean Loham is directly connected with the feedback we received from our industry partners. They stated repeatedly, time and time again, that the ideal Fresno State graduate would exemplify a holistic outlook manifesting social, solid, critical thinking while creatively connecting the dots with a masterful command of the language in a social context. Indeed, industry leaders seek students who are able to make connections emotionally, intellectually, and socially. And the College of Social Sciences exhibits excellence by one, fostering empathy in our students, which we need greatly in this world, and two, promoting a sense of urgency with respect to changing the world for the greater good. So thank you again for your leadership, Dean Loham. Indeed, along with social sciences, arts and humanities, under the leadership of Dean Honora Chapman, offers the tools our students need to think creatively and make meaningful connections. The exploration of thought through the written and spoken word and the production of art develops a student's personal and social identities. Lastly, I want to highlight some of the impactful ways we're building connections within our own community. We need to know our own self-worth. We had many exciting accomplishments over the past year. I'm really, really glad about that. In September 2022, the Fresno Merced Future of Food Innovation Coalition, or F3, was awarded $65.1 million in federal funding. <laughs> F3 was the largest grant awarded under the federal one billion built back better regional challenge as a key partner fresno state will receive more than seven million dollars with a focus on growing the regional economy promoting inclusive and equitable recovery and creating good paying jobs in industries of the future such as clean energy next generation manufacturing and biotechnology of which we are the leaders the success of this grant and fresno state's pivotal role was spearheaded by Dean Ram Nuna, who has represented the interest of our students and campus brilliantly. Give him a hand of applause, please. <clears throat> Another campus partnership that benefits our community and region while placing Fresno State on the national stage, notice my focus on the national stage is important, is the MOU signing this past December between Fresno State and the US Army Civil Affairs. For the past decade, Fresno State's Jordan College of Agricultural Sciences and Technology has helped educate military and civil affairs officers to better understand local farming systems in regions of the world where they will deploy, preparing them to identify and address global food insecurity challenges. I want to thank Dr. Bill Arizian for championing 
this initiative and representing our Jordan College on the national and international stage. And speaking of elevating Fresno State's name on a national level, let's celebrate our talented and passionate student athletes who elevated us to number 24 national ranking in football. Just looking at you, Terry. The Mountain West Championship game, another win over Boise State, what broadcast nationally on Fox and drew nearly 2 million viewers, the most ever to watch a Mountain West game. In addition, this past football season was a moment of pride for our alumni base and the entire community as Fresno State recorded its highest average attendance since 2005. In a football season that began with great uncertainty, these Bulldogs would not quit and rally together during tough times. That level of determination and grit was once again demonstrated when the Bulldogs decisively defeated, I'm gonna say that again, just for you, Terry. <laughs> decisively defeated Washington State in the Jimmy Kimmel Bowl in Los Angeles in a game that was viewed by 2.3 million viewers. How do you like that? <laughs> Get this, combined, the championship and the bowl had 4.3 million viewers who were witnesses to the power of Fresno State's excellence. Let me end by showcasing one more pride point of international coverage for Fresno State. Our Fresno State marching band had a phenomenal performance at the Tournament of Roses parade in Pasadena. They wowed the audience with their energy engaging music and bulldog spirits. I was there, I was like, those are my dogs. <laughs> Indeed, right after, many presidents and chancellors reached out to me to congratulate me for the Bulldog Marching Band's energized and inspirational performance. Our Bulldog Marching Band, under the leadership of Professor Steve McKeithen, showcased the best of our valley it's the valley that's a, that this is about to the world. These national opportunities for football and Bulldog Marching Band showcase our Fresno State band brand and elevate our university and region, driving recruitment, retention, and philanthropy. The more we do that, the stronger we become as a brand. Allow me one last iteration of our theme of connecting with one another. Spring at Fresno State is commencement season, as you all know, a time when our students shine. I would like to honor one of our most well-known soon-to-be graduates, Victory Bulldog III. <laughs> Victory's power in making connections is truly unmatched. You have Victory and there's everyone gathering together to take a photo with him. Everyone wants to really, really take a photo with him. This spring, be sure to take a photo with him and say goodbye. I look forward to watching Victory the third walk across the graduation stage this spring in his well-deserved retirement with tons of treats and really good dabs. <laughs> so, so I hope that everyone will enjoy the abundance and energy and exuberance of Victory Bulldog the fourth. <laughs> And here I am trying to contain the energy of victory, the fourth, through our last photo shoot. <laughs> yeah, that was the luckiest shot that we had. The other ones were like. <laughs> so today our theme has been the power of connecting with each other, the power of connections. 10 years from now, what will our current students say about their time at Fresno State? Whom will they thank for the good life they have accomplished for themselves and for their families? A staff member who helped in a time of need? A donor whose good heart made a scholarship possible? A faculty member who believed and had the passion to inspire? The seeds we plant today will grow strong and bear fruit, blossom beautifully, 
and uplift our region, country, and world. As the power of connecting with others is often overlooked, I today would like to convey my sincere gratitude to each of you here for your talent, your loyalty, and your quality work to Fresno State. Your meaningful connections to each other, that's what it's all about. Our students and our community made the following highlights possible. In 2022, we graduated 6,016 students with 80% staying in our region to become the leaders we all need. That it does reserve an applause, <laughs> Vice President Johori. 12,715 Fresno State students, faculty, and staff invested more than 1 million hours of community service for the 13th year in a row, demonstrating Fresno State's ethos as a community-engaged university. Another applause for that. That's for you. And 512 Fresno State employees donated during Day of Giving because you give to yourselves. The more we give to ourselves, the more the stronger the community becomes. These accomplishments are the fruits of your collective effort. I want to take a moment to thank those of you who reached out to me during the holiday season to say you enjoy my family's apple pie recipe. So everyone wants an apple pie, I know that, but I cannot make an apple pie for all of you. <laughs> but in this spirit, please save the date for our Employee Appreciation Day, which will be in March, hopefully on Pi Day, and that's P.I. I'm looking at you, Dean Meyer. <laughs> when I will share pie and Fresno State ice cream with all of you. And of course, I'm sure Dean Meyer is thrilled, and as his uh, mathematicians are, to celebrate pi, P-I 3.1415, <laughs> on with real pie, the pie that you can actually eat, <laughs> a la mode. I'm gonna end with this. As I was driving to the university today, I noticed the Sierra Nevada mountains embracing our valley with our snow caps gleaming with hope. A hope that permeates our mission to transform the lives of our students and to lead our region to new heights of excellence. I want to thank you, Fresno State, for your heartfelt efforts. And I want to say one more thing. Go dogs! <laughs> You know, I, this is a sort of like a small space. I'm gonna actually go down there. When I was in the classroom, I would always be in the classroom and not in front. So I'm gonna take your uh, Q&A. I'm joined by my colleagues, uh, Provost Fu, uh, Vice President Edition A. Stone, uh, Vice President Willis, and our Athletic Director, Terry Toomey. Uh, some of you sent in your questions ahead of time. I'm gonna respond to them right now. Um, and then after that, Q&A is open for all of you. Good morning. Thank you for being with us today. My name is Lauren Nickerson, and I am the AVP for University Communications. As the president said, to kick off our Q&A portion, I will start with the questions that were submitted in advance of today's assembly. So the first question is, I've been feeling a lack of support for staff as we've dealt with recent weather conditions. When we were dealing with cold offices as the heaters were not working, the solution was to dress warm when seven buildings were operating at 40 to 50 degrees and faculty were encouraged to move classes online. Recently, as our governor is urging people to stay home and not travel in the rain, we were not provided any options to telecommute. I would like to know if staff voices are being heard and considered as we look at the overall well-being of our university. So I, I do empathize with you greatly. Uh, cold uh, impacts me tremendously. I don't have the padding that a lot of people have. So <laughs> I'll start off with that. Um, if there are cold situations or if there are situations in your office that you need to address, please talk to your managers. Um, if, if the manager is um, attentive to you, the manager will find a solution. Um, if no solution is found, please reach out then to a level up. One of the vice presidents will surely um, address this issue as well. Uh, we also saw that when the pipe broke for the heating system, and I've learned a lot about the energy in the central plant and all of that, and I've begun to appreciate greatly 
why that central plan project is so important to all of us. Uh, without that central plan, there's no heating in any of our buildings. Um, when that broke down, we immediately had a um, cabinet meeting, uh, Vice President Aston called it, um, and we collectively decided to not come to the office if the category of uh, that person's job uh, permitted to do so. So we were off at home, not off, we were at home, working from home during those times. Um, I had to be in the office. It was a little chilly for me, uh, but I was able to weather the storm with, um, with gloves that actually Carol gave me for Christmas. <laughs> 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 uh, so, so I do understand that, and, and I do hear you, um, and I understand um, that um, as staff uh, members, I value you greatly. And I want to connect, you know, to the speech that I just gave to all of you today. I led with staff in a very intentional way because staff are often overlooked. And I want that to essentially stop. We are working with this together, and we are all one unified team. So I want to tell you that I do care very deeply for you. Um, if there are issues that need to be uh, addressed, please let your vice president know. Go through the chain of command, but ultimately let your vice president know, and we will address them for sure. Our second question is, our department hosts a lot of tours, events, and campus visits for future students. And we had challenges with every event we had when it came to maneuvering around campus and directing people. My question is, can we get communication on when fencing will go up and be taken down? Follow up, the Maple Roundabout is closed off. Where do we direct school buses to unload if that area is closed? Right, so I think the best thing to do in that case is to reach out to plan ops to see what's happening on that specific day. It is very challenging to know when certain pathways are going to be open and when others are going to be closed as well. Um, I know that sometimes I go to the SSU and I take the direct route only to encounter the green wall that's in front of me and then I have to go around with the scooter. Um, so, um, safely, yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> So I do understand that, and I understand that if you have groups of in, groups of students with you, it's also you know not cool to go up to the wall and say now we have to go around and go this way. So yeah, I think plan ops will be the first the first stop in which you say uh, what are the paths, where can I go, and where can where can't I go essentially. And we also post updates on our website, as well as send out communications before fencing goes up and is taken down. I would also encourage you to download the Fresno State app, which has an interactive map of where current campus routes are, as well as ADA accessible routes. So the third question is effective January 1st, the governor proclaimed four new holidays. Will these holidays be recognized by the university? So the university is part of a system, a 23 campus system, and as president, I cannot um, uh, authorize a holiday, a, a paid holiday for that matter. So it's all dependent on what the system will do. I will, of course, convey to the system that it is your wish to have more holidays. How's that? <laughs> How's that? <laughs> Thank you, we appreciate that. Sure, <laughs> I appreciate it too, by the way. <laughs> all right, well thank you for all of those who are uh, watching online and submitted questions in advance. Those were the um, total of our questions. So now we will open it up to anyone who has questions in the room. We do have mics that we'll bring to you, so please feel free, raise your hand and, and ask. Someone said that the food had run out, I apologize, that's like, the greatest no-no in my house, as Mariana knows, <laughs> right? I always overcook instead of undercook. So uh, next time we will be uh, very prepared for you. Since nobody was raising their hand, I thought I would. Um, I have a question at the end, but I, I want to stand up and thank you. And I want to thank you because I really appreciate the fact that every time you give a speech, you talk about students every single time. And for those of us that had been in the classroom and have gone, sometimes you really forget what faculty go through. And for you to bring students up and how it felt to teach them, and especially the students that later on communicate and say, thank you, because of you I graduated, 
that's empowering, I think, to all of us, not just faculty, but staff. So I want to thank you for that. I also want to address the apple pie. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I, because I read it. I don't cook. I try to, but it doesn't work well for me. And I really want it. I mean, if a Mexican can do it, so I'm um, you know. That, that whole recipe, it's like a dissertation for somebody that's graduating from culinary school. I had to Google two of the apples because I didn't know what the hell they were. <laughs> and I mean, I'm not making a joke out of this. I'm serious. It's not a joke. Yeah. I mean, I'd have to be a daughter of Martha Stewart or something. And the final question that I'm really hoping it happens before my FERP is over. When are we going to have a Victoria? When are we going to have a female bulldog? You know, <laughs> I, I did have the same question. I think Jackie can answer to it, because she's right there. Because I actually asked her that question as well. As someone who spent the last eight years working with uh, Victor E. Bulldog III and our university mascot. I do get this question all the time. And I am, I've thought the same thing. Um, but also as somebody who I have Victor E. Bulldog III at home with me, I have Victor E. Bulldog IV at home, and I also have a, a personal English Bulldog who is a female. And they have, for this role, the male English Bulldogs do better in terms of their personalities and how they work as much as they have to work with people and the community. Uh, the, and also one of um, the universities in California had a female English Bulldog and they had to retire her early at University of Redlands because she was a little bit of a handful. And so it's just for this particular role, the, the, the male bull, English Bulldog does do better. So I just wanted to share that with you. I um, also, um, the breeder um, kept one of the females from Victor E. Bulldog III's litter and named her Victoria. And so we, we do have that as well. So she was, um, and she's given many, had many litters um, in that. And my uh, girl, Abby, is actually her daughter, so Victor's uh, niece. And then Victor the fourth is Victor E. Bulldog III's great nephew. So Victor is great Uncle Vic. So just to share a little bit with you about that. But yes, definitely <laughs> something that we've had that question as well. You're welcome. Uh, Jackie, I'm going to add to that twice removed. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> Any other questions or comments? Yes, please. Hi, my name is Anissa. Um, so I really loved your idea about having a booth at the booth area. Sure. And I was just wondering, um, I don't know how far in, like develops you have with the booth idea, um, but well, obviously you have a built. <laughs> um, but you had mentioned that you'll be out there two times a month. Are those days going to be random? They or? will. They will be announced ahead of time. Okay. And they will be random because my schedule is is it's a handful. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and uh, Diana can attest to that. <laughs> so yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. So I just really like they'll that be idea. announced, and then um, hopefully we'll get a schedule going in which we will also announce um, who is going to be at the booth. So the, the idea is that the booth will never be by itself. It will always be with someone. Yeah, thank we'll be you. able to connect. And then I'll be able to unveil to you the, uh, the new pin that I'm uh, designing uh, pretty soon. Uh, and there's a second pin that's coming uh, on board as well that will be uh, student design. So I designed one uh, based on the feedback that I had. Todd, who's back there, the, the master of uh, uh, design at Fresno State, um, designed a pin. I was uh, uh, on a flight uh, back east, and somebody sat next to me in the Phoenix airport. Um, and then they kept looking at my lapel um, and you know, finally said, hi, how's it going? <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, he said, I'm just trying to figure out where you're from. Like, what, what's, what's up with your pin? You know, what does it mean? Um, and of course, it's the shield of the university, which is dear and near to my heart, I have to say. Um, and I see uh, uh, Dr. Easton right there, the professor of Latin. Um, so uh, give the life so that I, you receive the life so that you may give it forth, right, in Latin. Um, uh, but 
people cannot tell what this means outside of our small environment. Uh, so I'm going to have a pin that has a very iconic Fresno State representation, and then it's going to say Fresno State on it. <laughs> so, so I'm going to be able to also share the pin with you at the booth. That's why the pin came up. Sorry, that's how my brain works. <laughs> yes, please. President Saul, uh, true or false, you will be serving in your twice a month president booth apple pie. <laughs> uh, true. <laughs> First cup per serve. How's that? <laughs> Good idea. Hello, uh, William Hart from the Office of Ideas. Um, I'm Dr. Booker in the University of Diversity Office officer position, I'm so thankful that that's institutionalized on our campus now. Uh, my question is, for you as our president, where do you see our conversation on diversity, equity, and inclusion advancing, specifically when we talk about like racism, oppression, anti-blackness, that kind of thing? Yeah, let's talk about that, William. And I want to thank your leadership in chairing that uh, search uh, that allowed Dr. Booker to be here with us today. I'll start off and then I'll give the mic to Dr. Booker uh, from that point on. Uh, I gave sort of like an overview, a very brief overview of what my vision is. My vision is double. One is to celebrate who we are as a region. I think we often overlook the fact that we are so diverse. We're literally so diverse. We speak over 120 languages here um, at Fresno State. Um, and oftentimes we just see that as a given, you know, and we don't really connect deeper, on a deeper level, uh, where people come from. Uh, with, uh, I'll give you an example, with Vinay 50, Hmong 50 story that uh, just closed at the Fresno Fairgrounds. I, it was the second time seeing that exhibition. First it was Hmong 40 and now it's Hmong 50. I never knew what the Hmong people had to go through to get to the valley. I never knew the pain. I never knew the separation. I never knew the death that people had to endure to get here. So that's one side, right? The other side is, what are the histories behind all of our peoples here? What are the histories behind the African-American experience on our campus? What are the histories behind the Latinx experience? What are the histories behind the Armenian experience? What are the histories of those people who came here with broken hearts and found a place that they called home? I think we need to be aware of this history we need to be aware of the history of the region, how the region connects to California, how California connects to the country, how the country connects to the world as well. With Black Lives Matter, for example, it became an international movement of people saying Black Lives Matter. So I want to make us aware of what history is first and foremost, and how we all contribute to the economy, to the well-being, to the effervescent energy that we see here in the valley. That is my first step. The second step then is to really take on the concept of history. What is history? What is the history of our country? I went back east and I went to the uh, uh, M M National Museum of African American History and Art, and I was able to see from the bottom floor up, right? The bottom floor showcases the slave trade, and it showcases the slave trade based on sugar. Sugar was you know, the economy of all of that. From that point on, it was the 19th century. From that point on, you know, it was the civil rights. And then you go up the stairs, up to the top floor, and you see the contributions of African Americans to the history of this country in music. What would America be without the contributions of black Americans in history? It'd be a completely different country. What would it be in terms of sports? What would it be in terms of politics? What would it be in terms of scientists and artists and everything else? So I think we need to become aware of how it is that we need to come together as a people, not in a combative way, but in a way that informs, in a way that builds bridges of understanding of what history is and how it is that history here and now is us. Dr. Booker, please. I concur. Thank you so much for your question. Um, I do agree wholeheartedly that 
reconciling history is important, right? We have to know where we come from. We have to have that foundation to be able to determine why these systemic issues are happening. Fresno State is very diverse. The Valley is very diverse. I'm learning every day from coming from the South. However, diversity is just a metric just how we measure, we check boxes. For me, the focus is to conceptualize what equity and inclusivity means, not just diversity. We're not just checking boxes. We're actually understanding what it takes to have a voice at the table. So for me, that's what this role will actually help conceptualize through the inclusive excellence framework. Interweaving equity first, diversity and inclusivity into the framework of everything that we do at Fresno State, inside the community, inside the classroom. Because we all know, I've been in higher education for over 20 years. Education happens outside the classroom as well. So we need to make sure that we are preparing holistically graduates to go into a global society by not just being able to identify people that look different but being able to understand what differences are. And so for me, that is a collaborative effort. It is not the UDO's effort. I am not the savior. I am not the campus police, even though DeAngelique is. <laughs> <laughs> I am not the campus watchdog. I don't spank legs. My grandmother does. It is a collaborative collaborative effort that's going to take education. But first and foremost, relationship building. People are saying, hey, what are you doing? You're not meeting people. I'm like, yeah, I got to find an office first. <laughs> then my office got cold, so then I went home. And now I'm back. <laughs> it's about meeting people. And I can tell you, relocating here from the South, I am proud to be a Southern Belle. I know the South gets a really bad rep. But I can definitely tell you that we do not ride on alligators, like Beyonce said. <laughs> Fake news. However, I have learned that being here, there is a different culture in Fresno. I walk out on campus community, and people that don't stop me and go, are you Dr. Booker? I'm like, how do you know? <laughs> how did you know it was me? Everyone else puts their head down and turns around. That's not an inclusive environment. That's not what's happening. And that's not what we want individuals to see. So for me, it's about everyone getting on board, everyone understanding, everyone having the jargon, everyone understanding that this is something that we have to do. It's imperative because you are so diverse. So we need to make sure that we're not just focusing on the metric that we're focusing on the outcome of actually being equitable, and that's inclusivity. People coming to work feeling like they belong, not feeling invisible, because I don't look like everyone else. People that are walking past you in the morning and saying, hey, good morning. I know that's odd. Apparently, you don't do it around here. <laughs> so that's what I envision, but that's just my thoughts. Thank you very much. One last one. Yes, please. All right, first question. In the interest of transparency, do you have any classified documents you'd like to talk about? Oh. <laughs> Not that I'm aware of, no. <laughs> The, uh, the second one, I'm not going to ask it because it's about measuring, but the, the one that it's been pressing us in the uh, CSU and the Academic Senate is having ombuds on campus. Right. Are you <clears throat> committed to doing something like that? Because we're particularly concerned about people having a complaint and then being right. brushed off, yeah. and which, of course, would happen in the last administration, right. and then also not knowing what to do. And this includes faculty, staff, right, and students. Right. I totally hear you, Dr. Jenkins. Um, we are in the process of reviewing our Title IX recommendations right now. 
which will address a lot of the issues that you brought up right now. Um, a lot of times we feel that if something is happening, we don't have the access or we don't have the know-how or we don't have, where do I go? What do I do? What are the resources for me? Going back to what Belinda said, what are the mental resources for me during this process as well? So um, I am going to unveil the very uh, sound, and very um, gold standard uh, view of what Title IX is going to look like, what microaggressions, macroaggressions, what, what, what do we do about each other? How do we hold each other accountable as we move forward together? Which is also part of my connecting with each other speech. So I thank you for that question. Yeah. So pretty soon you'll see you'll see what that looks like. Okay, I think we're at a stand, right? Thank you very much. Have a great semester. <clears throat>